Hey, this is Analog Girl, and today I'm talking about shooting time lapse with a Bolex and a Norris intervalometer. And I was able to borrow this setup from a friend of mine, and I didn't really know much about the history uh, background about this device, so I did a little bit of research, and I found out it was invented by a man named Dan Norris, who passed away some years ago, but apparently he was a really brilliant guy, a really kind man, and he also won one of those um, Technical Achievement Academy Awards for inventing this, which is really cool. Uh, before we can attach the motor, we need to set the camera up correctly, and the first thing you need to do is remove the winding crank by turning it clockwise. It comes right off and make sure you put that somewhere where you don't lose it. You want the camera to be in the off position. You want the motor disengaged and you also want the run switch pushed all the way over to M and locked. And you also want to double check that your shutter is all the way open and that is in the up position. Okay, now we can attach the motor. So the motor attaches right here. This is the motor port. And also with these four screws, one, two, three, four. And the shaft on the, mo on the time lapse motor, if you look carefully, it has a nylon shaft with two different uh, grooves in it and the grooves are different sizes the notches or grooves are different sizes and those line up with two metal I'm not really sure what you call them tabs inside of the port and those are also two different sizes so as long as that's lined up correctly it'll just slide on you shouldn't force anything and what I do is I look at the motor shaft and I see what the position is and then I use the Bolex rewind key which goes here and I use that to adjust the position inside of the motor port so it will just slip so the motor will just slip right on see that it just slid into place and now you just gently tighten up these screws Okay, that's in, and you're ready to attach the controller. It's already got Velcro on it, so that's convenient. It attaches with this two-pin Limo cable. There's a port right here. And then it plugs in right here where it says remote. Remote. And now you need to give it some power. I'm using a battery for my Ari SR. This is a 12 volt battery. And then you just plug that in. This is a four pin XLR power cable. Okay, so we are almost ready to load the camera. You're gonna wanna make sure that this is in manual and this should be up and in run position. And you also wanna make sure that the motor is in forward and not reverse. This is just, you know, you just load it as you normally would. And then, because you have the motor disengaged, what you're gonna do is press the red button on the controller. And then you wanna roll off, I wanna roll off four feet, so four feet times 40 frames is 160 frames. So I'm just gonna press this until I see 160. So I ran off a few feet and I just wanna talk about the controls on the controller. As I mentioned, when the controller is in the run position and you press the red button, it advances the camera by around four frames a second and you'll use that for loading and for unloading. When it's in 
single frame mode and you press the red button, you will get one crystal controlled frame. These dip switches are to set your shutter speed and they go from one eighth of a second all the way up to 256 seconds. They are additive. That means you can use any combination from one eighth to 256 to create a very specific shutter speed. If I wanted to do a three and one eighth shutter speed, I would push up one eighth, I would push up one and I would push up two. This middle section is burst mode, and that's if you wanna do multiple frames per interval. So they are also additive, one through five, and you can use any combination, and you could have up to 15 frames at a time. So this thumb wheel controls the interval time, and it can be set in hours and minutes or minutes and seconds. It's important to keep in mind that the interval is the total time that the shutter is open and the shutter is closed. And you can't have an interval that's shorter than the shutter speed. So for example, you can't have a one second interval and a two second shutter speed or two second exposure. That would not work. Um, and okay, I'm gonna change this just to show you how it operates. I'm gonna set it for a five second interval with a four second shutter speed. So I turn the thumb wheel to five. And I push up the number four. We're gonna push this hold button down to minutes and seconds. And then we'll see, the counter will go down. And the sh shutter LED light will stay illuminated when the shutter is open for four seconds and then dark for one second. You wanna reset your frame counter to zero before you start your time lapse so you can keep track of it. A good uh, length for, I think, for a time lapse minimum is 10 seconds. Anything faster than that, it kind of goes by too quick and you can't really register it. Okay, I'm gonna put this in a hold again. And let's just look at burst mode. And I'm going to set it to an eighth of a second. And I'm going to put the burst mode to four so you can see what burst mode looks like. And I'm gonna push it down to minutes and seconds again. Okay, so that's how burst mode works. I think I pretty much covered everything. I'm gonna load this Bolex with some fresh film and I'm gonna go and shoot some time lapses. So stay tuned so you can see how those turned out. I'm pretty excited. I've never used this motor before. So it's kind of an adventure for me. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. This is